Good evening. We bring you the latest in the world of sports. I'm Paolo Del Rosario. We give you the conversations you want to hear from your favorite icons and athletes. I'm Diego Dario. And in tonight's game plan, we'll break down the exciting matchups to look forward to in the PVL All Filipino Conference. And we'll take a look at what to expect in the final window of the FIBA Basketball World Cup Asian Qualifiers. Buckle up, sports fans. Let's get in the game. All the stars come together in the heart of volleyball, the PVL All Filipino Conference. Now, to tell us which matchups of elite talent we should be looking out for ahead of tomorrow's game day, we have with us volleyball analyst Neil, the real deal, Flores. Neil, how are you doing? I like that. I, like I was that. expecting that from Pao. Yeah. <laughs> Something, you know, again, no preparation whatsoever from a Flores to the real deal. Uh, Neil, first of all, thank you very much for coming on over. Great games we have tomorrow, especially for teams that haven't necessarily started out well, yeah. particularly Army. Army going up against uh, Choco, uh, Choco Mucho. Let's talk a bit about how these teams are going so yeah. far. What do you make of their campaigns? Right, again, for both of these teams, it hasn't been the best starts. Choco Mucho won their first game in three straight sets, but they fell back to back in three straight sets as yeah. well. And for the Army Lady Troopers, they're still looking for win number one. And at this point of the conference, at this point of the league, it's already vital for you to build on that win-loss record because only four teams will proceed to the next round. Now, we talked about the teams and their situation right now in the conference, but let's talk about the matchups. Who should we look out for um, in this game? Na to, uh, new? First of all, we have to look out for the battle of the outside hitters. It's mm, going to be yeah. Royce Tubino against Des Cheng. And uh, medyo magkaiba yung roles nila. We, we know that for the Army Lady Troopers, Royce Tubino has been that consistent top scorer. And without Jovelin Gonzaga in the fold, na double ngayon right. yung cargo ni Royce Tumino. Because uh, let's face it, in terms of recruitment, other commercial teams have that edge compared to the Army Lady Troopers yeah. because these players are enlisted. And uh, in their last game, she had 20 points. And for Des Cheng, all-around player siya for Choco Mucho. She contributes to the scoring, but she also contributes heavily on the non-scoring skills. And for Choco Mucho, when they don't have their middle blockers going, importante na mag-step up yung outside hitters. You know, you take a look at that particular matchup, and I'm really, well, I'm a bit concerned for itong si Royce Tobino, only because you mentioned that having to take over the scoring cudgels from uh, Gonzaga, who's not part of the team this conference, and you kind of have to spread the wealth there. Yeah. Kaya ba ng Army, uh, Black Mamba, Energy Drink Lady Troopers uh, to manage there offensively and finally find the group? Yeah, I, for me, kayang kaya because they also have other players in mm -hmm. their pool, which right. brings me to the next batch yeah. of yeah, matchups. Segway ko eh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> On my in my head, ba? Yung middle blockers nila Villarreal and Esguera will yeah. be going up against the veterans in Bedelion and Madi Madeag. Yeah. And uh, Comparing their outputs in their previous game, mas maganda yung ginalaw ng middle blockers ng army because Choco Mucho went up against Creamline and uh, Madibaneg only scored a single point. Bedelen only score, scored three points. So yeah. it was a very lackluster performance for their middle blockers. And this was primarily because the passing wasn't really great mm -hmm. during that match against the Pool Smashers. So for the army lady troopers, pwede na yun maging hinte. You have yeah. to break the reception pattern of Choco Mucho if you want na matanggal sa equation yung middle blocker so that they can just really focus on manning the wings of the Flying Titans. Right, so that's gonna be our first game for tomorrow. And let's move on to the second game, which is the Petrogas versus PLDT. They have similar um, standings right now at two two wins and one loss. Um, what can we expect from these two teams tomorrow, uh, Neil? For Petrogas and PLDT, these are the teams that are on the rise. Yes, Different absolutely. Different coaching systems right now. Coach Raldrick Ford with the high-speed hitters. Coach Oliver Almadro with the Petrogas Angels. And dito mo makikita na the change in coaching staff can also be the uh, part na ikakapanalo ng isang team. Yeah. They have different systems. Napatanayan naman niya ni Coach Rald with the Petrogas Angels. Yep. And for them, uh, since they are picking at the right time, we are discovering new talents na dati nagagamit sa bench from their previous team, but now that they're also in the starting unit. Well, uh, speaking about those who are already in the starting unit, uh, these two were typically already, even before the coaching change, as part of the starting unit, Remy Palma and Del Palomata. Yeah. Those were uh, 
the highlights that you wanted to yeah. talk about here. You take a look at their matchup. What stands out for you? Yeah, Double-digit performance for both of these players. And uh, they're very similar because they have that court sense. Magaling yeah. sila magbasa ng opponent setter. And uh, they also contribute heavily in the blocking department. And that's your first point of concern when you're a middle blocker. Get the points off the block. Get the rebounds. Let the others do their job and attack. Kahit nga, hindi sila masyadong pumuntos as long as they serve as that decoy. Okay lang eh. But the fact that they score double digits mm -hmm. consistently, mm -hmm. that just says a lot about the talent that they have. And before we move on to the next matchup that you want to point out, no? I mean, you talked about the new coaches of these teams. What makes it you know, different this time around, this conference for um, these, both these teams? Especially three, uh, three yeah. games in, right. medyo alam na natin mm -hmm. yung mga changes yeah. uh, that they've implemented. They have different training regimens, that's for sure. Mm. Personally, I know Coach Oliver, I also know Coach Rad. Mm. So I know how they uh, really focus on specific skill sets. Right. Yun yung nagiging character development ng bawat team na hinahawakan nila. So that's very interesting kasi after a few sets of adjustment, nakikita na natin that the players are already flourishing mm. with uh, the systems of their respective coaches. Now, let's talk a bit about some of the more, well, the fresh legs here on the team. Itong si Gretchen Soltones yeah. <laughs> and si Toby Prado. Uh, Always they, fresh legs. It, it, they feel like they have been turning back the clock in terms yeah. of uh, getting back into peak shape, peak form. Uh, Gretchen in particular, 14 points against Signal last time around. Uh, what do you have to make of this particular matchup and, of course, uh, their performance so far as a conference at all? I feel like that's what happened in this conference. Eh? Players turning back time, not yeah. just mm -hmm. Gretzel and Jovi Prado, yeah. even Isa Maizo Pontillas exactly. and Michelle Morente. Right. So all of these players now, they already have that opportunity to shine. And for these outside hitters for PLDT and Petrogas, one of the outstanding skill sets would be their passing. Yun talaga yung nagsa-stabilize nung transition of play nila. Gretchel Soltones is actually the best receiver right now of the league. And uh, that's the goal for Coach Oliver. Sabi nga niya, chinalage siya si Gretchel Soltones. Let's bring back that MVP form. Yeah. And for Jovi Prado, she has been very consistent even in the reinforced conference when she was just on the bench mm -hmm. for a substitute. Pero now he's back in the starting unit. Also a stabilizer when you need the point. Not too flashy, but very effective. So let's... Uh put more shine here on the veterans that have been shining here in the conference so far because a lot of people would say that the, you know, the game of volleyball has been changing it's a right. lot quicker but yeah. then you see all of these older play players uh, you know with all due respect to the word older as <laughs> the Pontillas and, uh, and the Vets. others have, right. have still play the same way as they did before what makes them so effective in today's game? Well, I guess how they view the game parang ngayon they know I think the word that I'm looking for is restraint. Alam nila kung kailan nila pupuwestahen yeah. uh, when you're no? talking about offense. Right. Yeah. And uh, I think the perfect example would really be Isa Maizo Pontillas. Yeah. You know, uh, the timing that she hits that ball, alam mo kung kailan siya nag -iisip. alam mo kung kailan niya gustong ipower through. So it's always amazing to see these players still shine and compete with, with the young guns because. Never ending yung umaakit ng talent sa TV. That's, that's what makes the league so competitive. Hindi tayo naubusan ng panibagong stars. And we're very excited to see all the volleyball action, Neil. And thank you for the time for um, giving us a preview of the, for the games tomorrow. Thank you. And of course, uh, catch the PVL live every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Watch the games on One Sports, One Sports Plus, Signal Play, and the Smart Livestream app.